I'm sure a lot of us have seen or heard people say that a person just had a stroke. Some say we were just talking and he suddenly collapsed. Others say that he collapsed and became unconscious or he just slumped and became unconscious. What actually happens before a stroke occurs? What are the signs and symptoms that you need to look out for in a person that is experiencing a stroke? What are the lifestyle modifications that you need to adopt to make you less prone to stroke? And how do you help a person having a stroke? In this video, we're going to be giving answers to these questions. And at the end of this video, you would have known how a stroke occur, some of the signs and symptoms, how to help a person experiencing a stroke, and the lifestyle modifications that you need to adopt. Hello everyone, it's your next door nurse Florence and you're welcome to another exciting time. If you're just joining us, you're welcome to the family. Kindly subscribe, like and share. Thank you. A stroke or cerebrovascular accident is a medical emergency and a life-threatening condition that occurs when a part of the brain loses its blood supply or blood flow. When that happens, part of the brain is not getting the oxygen and blood that it needs, so it starts to die within minutes. And this causes part of the body that the injured brain controls to stop working. The brain controls movements and thoughts. So a stroke can not only hurt the brain, but can also threaten the person's ability to think, move and function. There are two types or kinds of stroke or cerebrovascular accident, also called CVA, the ischemic stroke and the hemorrhagic stroke. Ischemic stroke happens when fatty deposits in the arteries breaks off and travels to the brain or when poor blood flow from irregular heartbeats forms a blood clot. It is the most common type of stroke and it occurs in about 80% of individuals. Hemorrhagic stroke, on the other hand, is less common but it can be more serious. It occurs when the blood vessels in the brain balloons up and bursts or ruptures or a weakened blood vessel leaks. Stroke can affect a person's language, memory and vision. Severe stroke, in this case hemorrhagic stroke, may even cause paralysis or death. There's another type of stroke that is called mini stroke or transient ischemic attack also called TIA. It is caused by temporary blood clots. These TIAs are warning signs that might last only a few minutes before they disappear. They should be taken seriously because they tend to be signs of an underlying serious conditions. People who have TIA symptoms are definitely at a higher risk of having a subsequent stroke and they need to be evaluated. There are some risk factors in the development of stroke. And one of the most common risk factors is high blood pressure or hypertension. High blood pressure puts the arteries under constant stress and too much force within the blood vessels damages the artery walls and makes them weaker. Next is tobacco smoking. Nicotine in the tobacco products makes the blood pressure go up. Cigarette smoke also causes a fatty deposit in the arteries, especially that of the neck and it also thickens the blood and makes it more likely to clot. Even passive smoking, that's when you're in a place where people smoke, can affect the individual. Another risk factor is heart disease, especially among the very elderly. For example, damaged heart valves for the elderly that have irregular heartbeats or clogged arteries as a result of fat deposits. There's also diabetes. Diabetes damages the blood vessels and makes stroke more likely to occur because people who have diabetes often have hypertension and they are more likely to be overweight. And these disease conditions increases the chance of one developing a stroke. If an individual has a stroke when the blood sugar levels are high, the injury to the brain is greater. Next is medications like blood thinning drugs, for example aspirin, used to prevent blood clot formation, can sometimes make 
a person more likely to develop stroke through bleeding. Other risk factors are age, family history, gender, and race. Stroke symptoms come on very suddenly. They take people by surprise. One minute you're fine, and the next you're having symptoms. If someone shows any of these symptoms, take them to the hospital immediately. One, sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm or leg, especially on one side of the body. Two, sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding speech. Three, sudden loss of vision or trouble seeing in one or both eyes. Four, sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination. Although some strokes are associated with a headache, many occur without any accompanying pain. A sudden severe headache that does not appear to be triggered by anything is another potential sign that one might be having a stroke. In recognizing a stroke or when a person is having a stroke, every second counts. And what you do in those critical moments can potentially help save one's life. The longer a stroke goes untreated, the more brain damage can occur. So you need to act fast. FAST is a stroke symptom acronym that is used to recognize the onset of stroke in an individual. F means face. You ask the person to smile. Does one side feel like it's drooping? Is it numb? Is the person's smile uneven? Or is it loop-sided? A means arm. Instruct the person to raise both arms up. Does one arm drift downwards? Is it weak or numb? S means speech. Ask the person to say something or repeat a simple sentence. Does it sound strange? Or is the speech slurred? T means time. Time is of great essence. If you notice or observe any of these symptoms, call your local emergency number immediately or take the person to the hospital. Even if the symptoms go away, Note the time you first observe the symptoms. This is important because a clot busting medication can be given to someone having a stroke to potentially reverse or stop the symptoms from developing. But it has to be given within four to five hours of the start of the symptom. The individual can be a candidate for endovascular treatment. This is a treatment that involves surgically removing a blood clot that caused a stroke. Of fixing an aneurysm. Aneurysm is a weak area in the blood vessel that usually enlarges due to weakening of the artery wall. Endovascular treatment, usually done for patients with ischemic stroke, must be administered within 24 hours of symptom onset. It is extremely important that you note the time that the symptom started so that the medical staff in the hospital will be able to make a more informed decision about the treatment options. Perform CPR if necessary, that is if the person becomes unconscious, unresponsive, without pulse or breathing. You can check out my video on heart attack and cardiac arrest. I think it's up here. I discussed how to perform CPR. What are some of the things you should avoid? 1. Do not let the person sleep or talk you out of taking him or her to the hospital. When a stroke first happens, the individual usually feels very sleepy and most of them say that they are tired, so please don't allow them sleep. 2. Do not give the individual any food, medication or drink. Sometimes a stroke might affect the person's ability to swallow. 3. Do not drive yourself or someone else to the hospital. It seems like a good idea, but if the person is severely affected by a stroke, it is better to call your local emergency number so they come to medevac the patient. These emergency responders can start life-saving treatments on their way to the hospital to help save time and life. What are some of the lifestyle modifications that you need to adopt to make you less prone to stroke? You need to quit or reduce smoking, reduce your weight if you are overweight, 
Check your blood pressure and blood sugar level regularly, especially if you have a family history of hypertension and diabetes. Eat healthy meals, reduce your salt intake, and exercise regularly. So guys, I'm sure you'll be able to help and manage someone that is having a stroke before taking the person to the hospital. If you find this content useful and helpful, give me a thumbs up, kindly subscribe, click on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I upload new videos. You can drop your comments in the comment section below if you have any questions or concerns that pertains to health and wellness and I will attend to them. Don't forget, I'm your next door nurse and I'm just a knock away. I love you guys. See you in my next video.